This video is for the modern crypto investor. While we will cover aspects of the technology, the point is to provide insight into two very lucrative investment opportunities. We will traverse down a quickly winding path, where we hear about revolutionary blockchain solutions like Cardano's Hydra and Nervo's network storage units called CK Bytes, which aim to solve monumental problems like scalability and the state explosion dilemma. In order to make the best investment decisions we can, it is critical that we take the time to understand what we are investing in, so we can get in early and maximize our profit potential. From its inception, cryptocurrency has been a challenge to traditional banking system. Why do cryptocurrencies pose a threat? Because of their anonymous nature and ability to work outside of the traditional financial system, relying on technology instead of the authority of the state that banks use. Move outside the system and the traditional method of retaining wealth and power is compromised. Despite the gulf between traditional banking and the use of digital currencies, however, many financial institutions have opted to use cryptocurrency. Because banks have to be able to keep money and transaction records safe and secure, without slowing down the verification process, several major banks have decided to partner with crypto projects or launch their own cryptocurrency. Digital ledger technology allows them to clear and settle transactions using blockchain, allowing for greater security. Transactions are a very important part of this video, since every transaction on a blockchain must be stored somewhere in the network's ecosystem. This problem is important to you, the investor, because number one you pay for it in transaction fees and number two the project that solves this problem will become increasingly valuable to the investors that hold its coins. The Internet of Things is rapidly becoming a reality. We are becoming more deeply connected to devices such as tablets and smartphones, and as our other devices become smarter, technology is permeating every aspect of our lives. The biggest question modern investors need to ask themselves is, where does the rapidly growing focus on technology and the revolutionary changes to the financial system meet blockchain? The answer to this question will provide the insight needed to make the most profitable investment decisions for the future. In countries with historically weak currencies, Bitcoin has become popular with citizens. In 2021, El Salvador became the first country to make Bitcoin legal tender. Yet Bitcoin is limited in its ability to serve as a common global currency, due to its limited supply, rapidly rising price, and volatility. Stable coins, however, have the potential to rival fiat currencies as the dominant form of payments. Their value is relatively stable, and they can be sent instantly without the transaction fees associated with credit cards or international remittance services such as Western Union. In addition, because stable coins can be used by anyone with a smartphone, they represent an opportunity to bring millions of people who lack traditional bank accounts into the global financial system. In this way, stablecoins are very promising as a form of low-cost, high-speed, inclusive payment technology that is poised to disrupt the central banking system. This strength is also crypto's greatest weakness, as it marks itself as the biggest challenge to the long-held authority of the elite class. The second largest weakness of cryptocurrencies is their anonymity and portability, which make them appealing to bad actors such as criminal groups, terrorist organizations, and rogue states, further tarnishing its image as a reprieve from generations of economic instability and a path to shatter the class ceiling that entraps 92% of the world's population in poverty. This has led to great uncertainties about the regulatory treatment of this emerging financial technology. However, the speed at which it is emerging and its autonomous nature have driven many regulators to compromise. As the regulatory scrutiny begins to settle, real-world problems can begin to be addressed by this blooming technology. Blockchain projects all aim to solve one or more of the three main constraints to the use of blockchain technology. These are speed, scalability, and interoperability. New innovations have driven many third-generation projects to produce high-speed transactions, yet this speed limits scalability. Yet, one revolutionary new project, Cardano, has been designed to overcome not just speed but speed and scalability. Cardano's Hydra solution will deliver the most powerful blockchain network the world has ever seen. And their recent partnership with the Nervos network now promises to solve the third and final challenge, interoperability. There is a consensus in the blockchain industry that the future digital financial world will be built in a multi-chain environment, and there will be many chains in the future, working together to form a new global network. Not all chains are integrated. The world is still divided. From the perspective of user experience, it is highly fragmented. The so-called goal of achieving a universal passport is ultimately a cross-chain protocol that allows Nervo's network CKB to connect with any other chain, such as BTC, ETH, Cardano and EOS. Force Bridge allows assets to flow freely between Nervo's network and other chains. A second solution called PW Core allows users to flow freely on Nervo's network and other chains. And finally the third solution is Polyjuice, which allows developers to freely migrate between Nervo's network and other chains. Polyjuice is a general-purpose computing layer on top of Nervo's network. This is just the beginning of a massive upgrade to blockchain technology that will be paired with Cardano's speed, security, and scalability. 
Solving the interoperability problem will allow UTXO chains like Cardano and Nervos to become the central hub of a new global network where all users can access any chain at any time, freely and unimpeded. Hydra is a Layer 2 blockchain solution built to run on top of the existing Layer 1 blockchain on Cardano. Hydra uses isomorphic state channels which basically will use the same ledger representation over and over again to provide uniform, off-chain ledger siblings. These are referred to as heads by the developers. This puts things like NFTs, native assets, and Pluto scripting directly into a Hydra head, which acts basically as an extension of the current existing system. This Layer 2 solution will provide the much-needed scalability that is required for networks with high use rates to maintain the required throughput for applications built on the blockchain. Hydra will work side by side with Cardano's existing Layer 1 to provide a smooth user experience. The Hydra Layer 2 protocol will not only help to scale the network but will also help to bring down fees to a sustainable level. Hydra will help to set these fees to a low enough point that it is not a problem for its users, while also preventing the fees from being low enough to encourage denial of service, DOS, attacks. However, as the transaction history grows on the Cardano network, storage will become a problem over time. While a Layer 2 solution like Hydra will mitigate against these problems in the future, the amount of transactions slated to be performed in five years' time will be an order of magnitude much greater than anything that has been seen before. The partnership with Nervos will enhance scalability in the Cardano network by not just providing the interoperability it needs to operate in a global economy but will provide the required storage capacity when processing millions of transactions per day. A pioneer in cryptocurrency utility, CKB is a cryptocurrency that can be used as a secure store. A value, like Bitcoin. And it can also be a value token behind smart. Contracts, like ETH. More importantly, CKB will be used to store, execute, and rent space on the Nervos blockchain using these CK bytes. Nervos a solution? Layer 1 of the Nervos network acts as a common knowledge base, where the most critical information, needed by all parties, is stored. CK bytes act as the storage medium for Layer 1 information and gives the coin holder the power to occupy a part of the total state storage space on the CKB blockchain. Each CK byte provides the owner with one byte of state storage. The intrinsic value of the CKB coin, not just as currency, but also as storage, ensures that value is not determined just by speculation, but by its utility. As dApps, financial services, smart contracts, NFTs, and common good infrastructure occupy space, the available supply of CK bytes decreases. By linking state storage to CK bytes, Nervos can help prevent costly bloat and state explosion. What is state explosion? We are now going to discuss one of the most hidden problems in the blockchain industry, a problem most investors never consider. The state explosion dilemma. Unrestricted chains have no direct control over state size. What I mean is that, as we are experiencing with Ethereum right now, as the network grows, its ability to manage the amount of data on the chain becomes problematic and increasingly costly. This cost is the yoke by which every user on the Ethereum network must bear. And as Ethereum continues to grow in size and its transaction history become insurmountable, the fees on the network will become too expensive for anyone to use. This is a secret no one wants the investor to know. Data will continue to accumulate unnecessarily, making the storage resources and operating costs to run a node larger and larger, and making the decentralization of the network lower and lower. Nervos utilizes an innovative economic ownership model to avoid the problem of state bloat. It's in the Nervos design principles and it's called the state explosion dilemma. From a layered perspective, existing blockchain designs are outdated. Existing blockchains are designed with specific features in mind, such as paying or running a dApp, and developers hope to allow these upper layer protocols to adapt to the ecosystem after a period of operation or as it goes along. Vitalik but Erin admitted this Ethereum strategy to capture first mover advantage. Charles Hoskinson has spoken at length about this issue in many of his AMAs. To combat this problem, the Layer 2 protocol was invented. The most amazing thing about the public chain is the uninterrupted global coverage of services through open networks, which means global consensus and performance. What we saw was that many Layer 1 blockchains soon realized that they could not sustain the growth that has taken place over the past five years and this slowly evolved a series of Layer 2 protocols that can be secured by blockchains, such as payment channels, Plasma, Hydra, Matic, etc. A common feature of these protocols is the sacrifice or the trade-off of consensus for performance and the best way to solve this problem is to transfer most of the transactions to the upper layer protocol which offers a smaller consensus but provides better performance. These layer 2 protocols receive their security via the underlying layer 1 blockchain underneath it. Every node in the blockchain network will leave some data on the local storage after running for a while in the network. We can divide them into two categories and we will call them history and now. History is block data and transaction data, which are both historical. 
remember, the layer 1 CKB is responsible for state consensus, storage, and layer 2 is responsible for state generation, calculation. State is the status of the layer 1 blockchain at a given point in time, and every time the nodes in the network look at the state, the history should be the same to every node, and will include new transactions that the nodes all agree on, achieving consensus. Different blockchains have different ways of preserving history and state, and the differences make different blockchains form their own characteristics. Since we are concerned with state in this video, and the historical data affecting this state is primarily the transaction. To provide a metaphor, Bitcoin's current state is like a bag full of gold coins, each with the owner's name engraved on them. When a transaction takes place, Bitcoin, Cardano, and Nervos will remove the coin from the bag. What is left is what the user holds. This is the UTXO model. In the Ethereum account model, there is the bag of coins before the transaction, which is stored on the Ethereum network. After a transaction has taken place in ETH, another bag with less ETH in it is created and stored. This process continues ad infinitum. On Ethereum, when we want to know what the state is, we would look at the most recent bag of coins. But all the bags containing previous states still exist as stored baggage on the network. As we can see from this example, Ethereum storage needs become exceedingly difficult and costly to manage. So to recap, storage is a resource that is occupied in a block. Depending on the model, whether UTXO or account model, how that data is stored looks different. The UTXO model requires far less storage than the account model. But at the end of the day the concept of storage remains the same. It is a resource on the blockchain that must be managed and is the primary reason why scalability is such a big problem. If we are to define the scalability problem, we would say that each blockchain manages transaction data as the growth of history and state, the total accumulation of history and state. In this system there is no control over the size that it can grow to, and the data will continue to accumulate incessantly making the storage resources needed to run the whole node larger and larger, increasing the operating threshold of the whole node, and making the decentralization of the network further compromised. This is where Nervo's network becomes the essential component to achieve scalability. Ethereum recognized this in June of 2020 and Nervo's recent bridge to Ethereum was a move that will have vast implications for investors. As Nervo's CK bytes become consumed by Ethereum, Cardano, EOS, Bitcoin and future adopters, the value of the Nervos CKB token will begin to rise quickly, taking one Nervos CKB from its current 2 cent value to prices that will make many CKB holders very wealthy. With three new listings on Binance, Voyager and Buybox, the Nervos network CKB is an investment opportunity too high in potential to overlook. The Nervos manifesto points out that when blockchain first gained global traction, technologists rejoiced, enthusiasts invested, and the public paid attention. A path to the decentralized future had been cleared. Ten years later, much has changed. While progress toward global adoption is being furthered every day the path to getting there is less clear. Saddled with rigid frameworks, many once promising projects have hit a wall. Fragmentation has led to division in communities, putting them at odds instead of allowing them to combine their efforts and work together. Nervos believes that the path forward lies in the ability of the network to adapt. Instead of dictating our rules from on high, Nervos is working with the community to build, allowing their network to evolve alongside whoever is participating in it. Nervos stands for permissionless action and they are designing their code and our community to thrive, not split, as more voices join in the fight for interoperability. Nervos believes that the only decentralized future is a flexible one, and we are all excited to see where open collaboration will take us. We're using innovation as a catalyst for a more inclusive economy.